video podcast discussion or whatever we decide to call it, um, where we talk about this week's featured program. And this week's featured program, if you haven't already seen it, is World Stories to Help You Learn. And in that program, well, I won't spoil it, um, but you can see that program on our YouTube channel or follow along with the words on our uh, site, www.spotlightenglish.com. And uh, today in this program, we're gonna have a conversation about that program. So you can dive a little deeper. Um, I'm Liz Wade, and with me is Adam Navis. Hi, Adam. Hello, Liz, and hello, everyone uh, watching this on YouTube. Uh, we are once again thrilled to be with you, talking about uh, some of the, the, the things we couldn't include in the program, some thoughts we have about uh, the program. And uh, we are, this is, I don't know which episode this is, but we're in the we're under five, right? <laughs> Wherever this is this is falling, and uh, so yeah. like like Liz said, we haven't really figured out a name, but this is really two uh, native English speakers talking about uh, the program, which you've probably we would encourage you to listen to this program uh, prior to watching this video. Yes, and you can find the program in the. Um, uh, program description below, and you can also find it. We're going to link it up here somewhere, somewhere um, and you somewhere. can click. You can click on a link up there um, and find the program as well. And you can also, if you want a little bit faster version, you can check out the advanced version and then check out this discussion. So, Adam. Yes. I know this is well. This is a program that I wrote, but I know it's a program that you will love because yes. I know that you yeah. love stories. I do. I have done some some schooling, some study on stories. I think that story and storytelling is an important part. I've tried to, whenever I write a spotlight program, I try to find a good story. I think they're engaging. And I'm very excited to, to hear about what motivated you to write this program and kind of what you hope people take away from this program. Well, I will say that um, I did not know this um, before I started researching for this program, but uh, World Storytelling Day is on March 20 every year, and people all around the world celebrate this day. So, you know, in Australia and um, Europe and in the United States and um, places in Africa, I mean, all around the world, People come together in their spaces, usually, you know, not online, right. um, and they uh, they just celebrate storytelling. And what was interesting to me when I started researching this program is um, story just covers so many different things, right? It covers, uh, say, William Shakespeare, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, very complicated stories and and all sorts of different different things like that, but also myths and legends. So mm -hmm. um, like ancient stories that people have told for many, many years and they tell for lessons um, and, uh, and to, to teach people things, but also stories that are like your personal stories. So mm -hmm. stories that you might have about your life or um, an experience that you had, um, uh, and what that does for you and it, it, sharing your experience can help you, you know, lessen the pain of it or mm -hmm. uh, teach other people. Anyway, so I thought that was super interesting that uh, how do you celebrate this thing that has so many yeah. different facets? Yeah. So in this program, I'll let you talk, Adam. I promise. <laughs> uh, in this program, we just focus on uh, three simple stories. Um, that help people learn a lesson or that teach you a lesson, maybe something to think about a little differently. Um, and then I think uh, one of my favorite stories was the first story. So we can talk about that later, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I'll tell you why I love stories is because, well, often we think of stories as something for children, right? And I think this, right. this program, because of, because of what Spotlight is they are simple and stories are simple um, 
It, they can be simple. Well, they're they're maybe not simple stories. They're just told in a simple way, right? Yes. Like uh, your your story can have a couple different levels, even with just simple English. Of course, and I I, I think I mean um, children understand stories before they understand um, right. big complex right. mathematical equations. Um, mm -hmm. Hey, I missed you. You know, when you, when you tell your child, I missed you, that that's kind of a story there. You know, like, I was gone, yeah. now I'm back, and this is how I feel, right? Um, mm -hmm. But stories have an ability to expand, and you can throw in complexity and characters. And I one of the things that I love about um, talking about stories is that you can have stories where you do not like the people. There's been a lot yeah, of, and, and people are like, I don't like that story because that person made bad decisions. They, right, they, there are different parts ahead. of a story. I want to, I want to point out there's like different parts of a story, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's the characters and there's the plot and there's maybe, I don't know, you know more about stories. Descriptive than I. What, language, the setting. Yeah, descriptive language. So it may, you're saying like, if you maybe don't like one part of the story, one part of those ingredients, maybe somebody wouldn't like a story. Yeah. And I get excited to be like, well, what's happening inside you? Because we all know that a story, whether it's a movie or a TV show or a book we're reading or something I'm telling you, um, well, maybe not that something I'm telling you. That, that could be a story that actually happened. But a lot of these stories are just made up, right? If you read a scary yeah. story that has monsters or aliens, you know it's not real, but you still feel feelings. And uh, I think that's yeah. just fascinating that it can evoke emotion. You know, it's one of the few things I think, music might be the other, that yeah, really that's... evokes emotion in people. If you're reading a book about a cookbook, it's usually not a, like, you actually feel, <laughs> feel you might get excited to cook and to eat. Yeah. Um, do you have any stories that you would say, I have felt an emotion, whether it's a book or a, a movie or, or um, something? Well, you know, sometimes uh, stories are told through television, mm -hmm. and I will often, I will often, uh, this is so embarrassing, no. uh, I cry a lot during television. Really? A lot. A lot. What? Oh, yes. I just feel so overwhelmed with emotion about, mm. um, yeah, when, when somebody dies or when somebody's having a, a very tough emotional time. Uh, and if the story is well told yeah. and, you know, the characters are convincing, um, that can that can make me um, very emotional. Um, but I also have that with books uh, mm -hmm. sometimes. I, I did read a book in in college where it made me so angry. I had to put down the book because I could not I could not read it at that moment anymore. And of course, I read it. I read it later, but I was getting so emotionally, like, overwhelmed and angry that I just had to put it down. Yeah. Well, th this, there's two things. One, there's something called mirror neurons. Have we talked about this before? Well, we haven't, but we have a program about mirror neurons um, and about uh, this this feeling that we're talking about when you read yes. about someone's story, empathy. It's called Reading and Understanding, and you can check it out. I'll link it up here. Somewhere. Somewhere. Yes. Um, no, Somewhere. that's what happens. Check out that program too. When you, when you read a story or you experience, it's you're actually having a very similar experience to those people. It's what causes you yeah. to relate to people. And I think it's it's interesting, um, certain people in, let's say, public settings who are uh, leaders of certain countries when asked, um, what's the last book you've read? Mm. It's not super important. I always get, let me just say it this a different way. If I meet someone and I ask them, what's what's the latest book you've read or what what kind of tv show if they don't read stories if they say i don't like stories mm -hmm. i only read non-fiction that like fact facts right books about uh history or which there's story in history too well, yeah, we won't, we won't get that. but um 
I get really concerned. I've met a few people who are like, I just don't like fiction. And I'm very concerned about that because it really does create empathy in people about, you know, we've gotten to meet people through this channel, through Spotlight, and we've got to travel a little bit. And that's one way of meeting people and expanding your world. But if you can't do that, especially in a pandemic, yeah. if you're not engaging with stories, you just, you kind of turn in on yourself. And that's yeah. not, that's not a good way to live. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. I have heard that, um, that sort of thing before that, you know, empathy is so important to, um, to people, right? To society. Yeah. And um, if we don't read stories, we don't get exposed to as much of that empathy. Right. You just have yeah. such a small world that you think everybody's you just see, like you. Yeah. You can see why people are celebrating uh, storytelling, right? Exactly. Um, and you can see why it's such an important, important thing. And I think there's also, um, you know, if you think about the kind of story that comes from a personal story, um, uh, again, I love listening to, there's a radio program about um, where people just tell their stories. They have mm -hmm. maybe half an hour or 10 minutes um, and they have to pick a story from their life and they have to tell about it um, and tell it in an interesting way. Um, and I love listening to uh, that sort of program because I feel a little bit too, like not only feeling their emotions, but like, yeah. Um, I don't know what a simpler word would be, but like it feels a little voyeuristic, like mm -hmm. I'm uh, like I'm spying on them, right? I think uh, it's it's a gift. You're receiving the gift yeah, they're giving. That's true. That's true. that's that's a better way of of a more positive way. <laughs> not the creepy way. Not, not looking in their window as they. <laughs> no, I'm not looking in anybody's windows. <laughs> no, I I think um, the power we know we know in our hearts the power that stories have. So yeah. I know that you are a big fan of Star Trek, right? Oh, why you got, why you got to make me so nerdy? No, 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 own it. So I could say <laughs> Star Trek is great, and that is a fact. And you might be, you could yeah. agree or you could disagree. disagree. But if I told you the story that every Saturday my family came home and at 7.30, we turned on the television, and we watched Star Trek together. And I could smell, and I started using, like, all the smell. My mother would make grilled cheese sandwiches. Yeah. And so now we're, we're, we're drawing in taste. And and it's telling you, you, that's not something you have to argue with. I'm sharing. It, it is a gift, the gift of, yeah. of your story that you're telling with people. And, and we know this. You know, when I say, Liz, how are you doing? You don't say, I mean, sometimes you say good, but you'd be like, yeah, oh, today fine. has been crazy or today, you know, this yeah. happened. You tell me a story. This is how we talk. You know, that's interesting that you uh, that you say it that way, that stories are a gift for us. Right. Because that is um, that's how this program begins right? Mm. with um, with stories not existing in the world. And of course, this is a story. So, uh, I mean, it is here to teach us a lesson. Um, but it starts with this: these children who are saying, tell us a story. And the, the, the mother and father don't have any stories. And she goes on this, on this long journey and asks everyone she knows and, and animals and, you know, travels very far and wide. And then eventually, after... Um, after giving the spirit people a gift, she gets the gift of stories. And mm -hmm. um, even though it's such a a simple a simple explanation, it makes me feel like um, when I hear that, even just telling it now, I'm like, oh, what a gift! Yeah, right? like what a what a thing that we're able to to do. I don't know. I think it's a I think it's a great story yeah. about how stories came to be, which is a story. Yeah. Um, I think that's, that's phenomenal. And I think that is, I mean, for anyone who's learning a language to be able to tell a story in say English right. is a big deal, right? Like not just to yeah. order coffee or, or to do a statement, but to say, you know, this happened and then this happened. I felt this way about it. That's a, mm -hmm. that's a big deal because you're, you're communicating something in that language that is very personal in a way that ordering coffee right. might not be. And I think um, 
Yeah, we. so if you're watching this and you have, um, I would challenge you, like, tell us the story about, and it, it can be a few sentences, yeah, right in the comments. It doesn't have to be long. What is the story about what you're doing right now as you watch this? It could be, I'm sitting at my desk, I'm watching this, and then describe some things around you. Tell us what you're going to do when you're done with this video. Just tell us a little story. Um, the story of your day. The story of your day. Just write it in the comments, and we'll try to respond to as many as we can. Um, but we'd love to hear a story from you. And Yeah, or, or even if you don't want to tell a story from your day, maybe you're just having a really boring day, or mm -hmm. you don't want to tell anybody about it. Uh, tell us a story from your culture. I know that plenty of us have uh, stories from that are passed down or something that your your parents used to tell you or yeah. your grandparents or something like that, because I think those stories are so interesting, too. Or even just a story that you've read from Shakespeare or... Yeah, a favorite story. Any, any story. And so it's good to practice. So that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this conversation about stories. I know that I have so much more to say, but uh, I think we've run out of time. So, yeah. Um, yeah, and I know that Adam has a lot to say about <laughs> stories. I could go on and on and on. I know. About Maybe stories. we could make this like an hour long discussion. Oh, yeah. Adam, you were telling me about a book that you have that yes. I really do actually want to want to talk about. So this which is book. So great to uh, now, the, I'm I'm not showing you this book because of how big it is. It is, yeah. I'll I'll be honest. I have not read this entire book, but <laughs> uh, the seven basic plots why we tell stories. Uh, it reduces all stories to seven: overcoming the monster, rags to riches, which means you were poor and then you you find success, the quest which is like you've got to go out and, you know, become an adult or, or find a treasure. Something, accomplish something. Mm -hmm. Voyage and return. So there's, if you think of, um, what's it, the Odyssey, Homer, you know, you, you travel away and then you come home again changed. Right. Comedy, which is just yep. funny stories. Tragedy, <laughs> which are sad stories. And uh -huh. then rebirth, like... You, yeah. it's basically the opposite, maybe the riches to rags to riches. Um, yeah. So there, I think it's interesting to say what kind of story is this and how does that um, influence how we hear it and how we, um, yeah, how we can tell our own story. Because I think one of the things right. about stories is that we often have a story in our own brain about our own lives? Where are where where is Adam in his story? Where is Liz in her story? Is she yeah. is she down low? Is she going up? Or is everything good and it's about to crumble? And we tell we tell these stories all the time. How was your day? Oh it's bad. Oh it's great. They're little stories we tell. Yeah, it's true. All right. Yeah, we again, we can go again I have so much to say here. So um, much. But yeah, we uh, we just fill up YouTube, I think. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you to you for joining in this discussion, and we really hope that you leave some comments below telling us stories that you have enjoyed, um, stories about your life. Give that a try in the comments, um, or you know, you you can always email us at contact at spotlightenglish dot com or leave a comment on any of the programs at that website as well. Um, be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss any con any content from us. Um, and click the little bell so you'll get a notification every time that we put out a new video, you won't miss anything. Um, and then you can find our programs on our website, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. So somewhere around there, uh, yeah, let us know you're listening. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thanks.